As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realize that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over for $60. So head to OSEAMalibu.com and use the code DATABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with. Share them in social. Super excited to see what you end up choosing. I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Datable listeners 10% off your first order with code Datable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So so what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. The Datable Podcast is hosted by me, I'm Yue, a former dating coach in New York turned active dater in San Francisco. On each episode, you'll hear commentary by my producer, Julie Kraftchik, and other surprise co-hosts. This episode of Datable is brought to you by 500 Brunches. 500 Brunches connects like-minded people with similar interests to meet in real life over brunch. You answer a quick questionnaire about your interests and how you spend your time, and then they'll match you in small groups of six to eight at a brunch spot in San Francisco. Get a free entry into a brunch now by signing up at 500brunches.com and using the code DATEABLE. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Datable, a show that opens up a candid conversation about dating in San Francisco. And my guest today has probably dated almost everyone in San Francisco, right? That is... <laughs> That is not at all true. You work for 500 startups, so you must go on 500 dates. Like 500 dates? A 500 month. dates a month, you know, the usual. <laughs> Some, <time. laughs> Some stats about Sheil. He is 34 years old, originally from Pittsburgh, and he's been in San Francisco for four years. Yeah. And single, ready to mingle. Single. How yeah. single are you? Um, I would say I'm, I'm pretty single. I haven't dated anybody seriously um, for about a year. What's your strategy? Right now, you know, I would say like we were just talking about this before we turned on the recording, but I travel a lot, mm -hmm. and that definitely puts a cramp on my style. Yeah. Um, it's hard to get super close to somebody when you travel, but also it's like it goes both ways. Like I travel because partially, like I wouldn't be traveling so much if I was dating somebody. Absolutely. Right. But um, and then you were asking like, what's my overall strategy? I think like. The apps are very good for me. Yeah. Um, for some reason, only Bumble is. But Bumble's amazing. Every me. guy says that. Yeah. Every yeah, guy like, loves Bumble. Every day I have matches on Bumble. Uh-huh. On every other app, I have zero matches. Mm -hmm. Like, zero. I'm, yeah. I'm nobody on every other app. But on Bumble, I have, like, several matches a day with beautiful, talented mm -hmm. women. Yeah. Somehow. I've noticed that too from a woman's perspective. Oh yeah. Like Tinder is like a dead zone now. Yeah. 
No one's on it. It's a graveyard. Okay, I do know what it is for me. (laughs) Okay. And um, is it age? No. No. It's height. So Uh, I'm a short guy, and Bumble does not have height. Oh, and all the other apps do. So interesting. Yeah. Oh, they added it? You can no, still... you can't. Yeah. You can't. You're right. Tinder does not. Okay. Right. Um, but a lot of people add it on Tinder. Oh, got it. It's like a, a thing to do. You yeah. You put your height. Okay. So I want to get back to your dating life because I'm thinking about like, okay, just looking at your Facebook post, Sheil, because I stalk you all the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, awesome. damn. One, it's very attractive that you travel all the time. You go everywhere. Right, it's like well, it's an attractive quality that you are. Yeah, you're this adventurer in a way. Yeah, oh, for the right person. Right, but I think most women will find that pretty attractive. I right, see, I could see. But the then flip side the of flip it. side yeah. is, I would say, dude, this guy is not stable. Like, yeah. how could this guy sustain a relationship? He's always on the road. It's interesting because I think if you ask people I've dated, they would not say that at all. In fact, the last person I dated, seriously, we broke up because she was like a commitment phobe. Or actually, like, she doesn't like want to ever get married or have kids. So I was like, that's a problem for me. Right. Well, I'm not saying that this is innately who you are. I'm just saying but it's, the perception. It's the perception, right? the social media. It's the perception. Because I have this, this guy friend who is amazingly educated, has a great job. Um, so ready for a wife and kids, but all his social media posts are of him at a party with his shirt off or like <laughs> being surrounded by a bunch of chicks at a pool party. But he's so not like that in real life. He just takes pictures like that. So it's just interesting the perception that you give. I'm not saying that you're well, like you're a shirt. You know, a photo like of you reading a book by yourself. No, well, yeah, you're right. That's a great is, point. To but it. there so is like, a perception, exactly. right? It's about perception. It's your PR. You're, you're handling your so, own okay. PR. All right. Dating coach. Uh, what mm-hmm. should what should I be doing with my social media? Oh, I'm, oh okay. I'm not saying notch. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that. Um, well, my friend's example is kind of extreme because he's always like, "UA, why can't I find a girl to settle down with?" I'm like, "Well, what girl want to set up, settle down with a guy who takes shirtless pictures with a bunch <laughs> of chicks at a pool? Like, that's not cool, right? Uh, you're not doing that. Not that I know of. No, no. <laughs> not in any of the I do. Pictures. This this does lead to a kind of funny story that we can either tell now or bookmark for later. Let's do it. Okay, so I think of myself as like like average, very average looking. Not not uh, definitely not like somebody that you want to see shirtless. Okay, um, so <laughs> let's be honest. I never really, <laughs> I never really thought about who I want to see shirtless. <laughs> Let me check my list. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're number five. Okay, okay, okay. Some girl, UA apparently wants to see me shirtless. Number five in San Francisco. That's pretty good. Um, no, I mean, like, whatever. Like, I've never thought of myself as, like, the guy. I don't have, like, a six-pack or anything like that. So, anyway, but um, this is um, two years ago. I am at West of Pecos, one of my favorite bars uh-huh. and restaurants, um, on Cinco de Mayo. And um, on Cinco de Mayo, they have a mechanical bull. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really fun. And, and my friend Tyler owns the place. So, like, I, lo- I love going there and bringing people. So I'm there, and I get up on the bull, and he's like, take it off. So I take my shirt off. <laughs> Not something I normally do in public, but in this How case. How did you have? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> and so... I take my shirt off, and then I, like, swing it around or something, ride this bull, and whatever, like, go home, whatever, have a good time. And then Tyler is like, hey, by the way, this girl was asking about you. Oh. This girl said she thought you have really good energy. And I was like, whoa. Really good energy on that bull. On that bull. (laughs) So I was like, that's interesting. But my immediate reaction was, any girl that likes me shirtless, I am not interested in. Riding a pole. Yeah. Riding, riding a pole. Yeah. Exactly. So I actually legitimately, I was like, I'm not interested. And then, I mean, obviously, it wasn't like I was not interested. I was like, let me do some Facebook research. <laughs> and, and like, to be honest, like, 
I am a I am a certified stalker. If somebody is like, oh, you should talk to this person, of course I'm gonna Google the shit out of them. Fuck yeah. Um, That's what Google's for. And I'm really good at it. Mm. But I think I'm gonna I, I do it too, so I'm not calling anything, but it goes back to what you were saying earlier is that people make preconceived judgments based for sure. on social. Okay, people so, make pre yeah, okay. For sure. So is it the case that somebody has Googled me, came on my Instagram, and they're like, this guy is crazy, traipsing around the world. How, is he ever going to settle down? Probably. Or, or yeah. yeah, or they could be like, this guy looks, he seems awesome, but when is he ever in town? That's yeah. what I would quite, I mean, even getting you for our podcast, we're like, when's Sheil going to be in town? He's so hard to nail down. That, it's interesting. Okay, that's, that's fair. I would say I'm out of town one week a month. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's a perception. Anyway, so go on with Yeah, no, story. I think it's a perception because, like, obviously I'm more active on social media when I'm not here. I'm For not sure. posting, yeah. like, the yeah. same picture from my apartment every day. But I think that goes back to social media perceptions and dating profiles mm -hmm. and all that. You don't, you only post those crazy photos. You, well, you, you post, the, the other thing is, like, you post sort of, like, what makes you look good, right? right. Yeah, Or, like, For what's sure. interesting to people. In the last month or two, I've gotten, like, a couple people that I like, people I have not talked to in say like ten years, just messaged me on Facebook, being like, "Oh my God, you have the best life" or mm -hmm. something. And both times I was like, "Shit, like, what does that mean? What am I? What are the, what is the perception?" Mm -hmm. So, so on that note, um, not this person who I met from Cinco de Mayo, but um, the previous girl that I dated seriously um, for a couple of years. Um, we, so we met on OkCupid and she had, you know, we had connected, we had been messaging back and forth. And I, you know, I think she, had, we knew we had common friends so she probably looked at me up on Facebook. And I remember she, and we had common friends so she told them that like, I think he's probably just too cool for me. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, shit. What does that mean? I'm not, I'm not cool. I get that. I totally get that. I think it goes back to perception is that what attracts you to women is yeah. also what makes you not um, suitable for them. The novelty of it is that this person is a little bit out there, a little bit different than what you are normally used to. But then also what makes it unsettling is that they are a little bit out of reach. Right. Yeah. So you're just a little bit out of the comfort zone for some people, only based on perception. Only not, based on perception. Not based on, like, if someone met you face to face and had a great date with you, they would never think that. Yeah. But it's still, is that perception. So I understand what you're struggling with. So, okay, so um, does that mean, like, tone down the pictures in the dating app? Like, what do you, what do you think? I think it's about a balance. So yeah. you have your balance of your crazy adventure travel photos, and then you have a balance of just some normal photos with friends. Yeah. Right? It's, isn't it funny? I was just thinking about this. Like, everyone who's been to Machu Picchu has that damn picture sure. in their dating profile. What is up with that? I know. But it's... do they know that Machu Picchu is actually pretty freaking vanilla? Like, yeah, it's, it's like everybody right. has been there, hence it's on everyone else's dating profile. Right, exactly. Let's go back to this um, topic of perception because I kind of like it sticky for me. You are normal, but yeah. you give up the perception, at least to me, that you're somewhat unavailable, right? Uh. So part of this is, I think it's a catch-22. When you're single, you, you take up your time and you fill up your time, bettering yourself, bettering your life, yeah. and also keeping yourself occupied. Yeah. So by doing that, you keep yourself busy doing all kinds of different things. You take up different hobbies. You go to all these different events, right? And then you post pictures from all these different hobbies and events. So the perception you're giving off is you're living life to the fullest. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, you're also giving the perception that one, you're unavailable, and two, you're not looking. Right? Yeah. It kind of gives out it that totally perception, does. right? I'm it's too busy to, to I'm too busy to date without you even saying it. I'm too busy to date. I've That's seen, the perception yeah. you're giving I've seen off. Not, not you specifically, but just other people. I'm like, wow, they really just like are having a blast. For sure. And they might be. I'm not saying they aren't, but like you don't really ever know what's going on with someone from social media. Absolutely. And so yeah. I judge it based on would I set up my girlfriend with this guy? 
right? Because yeah. I look through. You're saying no. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I look at a guy and I'm like, he's barely in town. He's always, and when he is in town, he's busy with work friends or he's, you know, out at these events. Would I set up my girlfriend with him? Probably not. Because I feel, I the perception is such. The perception is totally. he's not in a place to date right now. He's too busy to date. I'll tell you. I'll tell you the reality of what happens. It's like, I. Um, it is true that like I have a lot. Like there's just a lot happening. It's mo mostly. It's not like I'm so cool. It's like there's a lot of like work and work related dinners. It's not at all about being cool. Um, <laughs> that I I have like every night pretty much, um, or people in town, whatever it is. Um, so it ends up being that, like, because of these dating apps, it's really easy to have a first date. Mm -hmm. um, beyond that first date, if I'm not, like, so into the person at the first date, it's hard to, like, keep momentum going. Right. But on the other hand, what has happened when I have had, like, serious relationships, um, of which I've had, like, two in San Francisco, um, the four years that I've lived here, like after the first date, like we're immediately together every day. Mm -hmm. And then like all the other stuff goes by the wayside. Yeah. And then I'm like, man, I'm just making this hard on myself. I, like I need to, so um, my New Year's resolution, which I have not lived up to. Uh, it's March. It's March, <laughs> yeah, well. Uh, my New Year's resolution was to always go on a second date. Oh. It's like, so my mom was in town um, the past week, and my mom, like, Indian parent, um, 34 is, like, so old. Yeah. Um, like, to give grandpa. some perspective, I was born when my mom was 21. So, <laughs> like, so think about it this way. Like, when my mom was my age, <laughs> I was 13 years old. Wow. Oh, my <laughs> like, It's kind of crazy. Um, so she's, like, I mean, for the past decade she's been like all right like what's going on like yeah time to get settled she yeah. said get settled um, <laughs> and it's just like come on i i know anyway i i have and they've met people i've dated um and then you know for whatever for whatever reason it, it hasn't worked out and then they're you know unhappy or or whatever but anyway the pressure from indian parents is also like another interesting topic mm. Um, or from parents in from general. Par yeah, from parents, yeah, from parents in general. Yeah. I do feel like Indian parents are like extreme. Like literally, every time I talk to them, it comes up. Well, my my guy friend who had the same pressure from his Indian parents, um, just went back to India and found the hottest girl and then married her, <laughs> and now okay. they're happily married. That's happily. great. Yeah, I mean, I so like okay. I this now maybe there's some story time. Um, I have met Yay. somebody in India that my parents set me up with, or that, that my family set me up with, and it was a hilarious disaster. Oh, do tell. Okay, so um, my grandfather calls me one day, I'm in India, and he's like, okay, blah, 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 there's this girl you need to meet, and, and I was just like, no, 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 not, not happening. And so I thought we'd settled it with my like 50 no's on the phone. And so then we like go out, come home, and then I'm in India with my brother and my friend Josh, white friend Josh. And we get home and they're like, okay, um, get some sleep. She's coming at 8.30. And I'm like, what do you mean she's coming at 8.30? 8.30 a.m. 8.30 a.m. She's coming. I'm like, what do you mean? This is a joke, right? And they're like, no, she's coming. Okay, so then the next morning, it's like 8 o'clock and they haven't woken us up. So I'm like, oh, they were joking. No big deal. And then like 8.30 comes around, I'm like, oh, it was obviously, she's not here. And then like nine o'clock, boom, shows up, heard her mom. And these, these, my family has like, they have like two apartments. And like, so they, I'm in one apartment, they put them in the other apartment and they're talking like with my family. And then all of a sudden, all these things are happening to me. Like somebody has come to the apartment, is ironing my shirt. Somebody is shaving me. Like, they're getting me ready. God. Okay. Oh, you're and like that, a prince. Well, it's like in India, it's like these things are... Whatever, you're, you're a prince. I'm a prince. I'm a prince. <laughs> Don't lie. Diva. <laughs> um, and then, then they're like, okay, now you go over there and talk. 
And so I'm like, okay, but like my brother and Josh are coming with me. So they all come along. And we're talking. It's like my grandfather's sister, her mom, her, me, Rishi, my brother, and Josh. There's like nothing to talk about. They're asking me questions about what I do. And of course they've like, it doesn't make any sense to them. What, like how the hell do I explain? Yeah. What? Like, what? <laughs> and then, okay, so like this happens. We have some chit chat and it's extremely awkward. And then they're like, okay, alone time. Okay, so then they're like, <laughs> alone time. you and her, her name's Neha. They're like, okay, you guys go. And then we go into a bedroom and like to have like alone time to talk. And so we're like sitting at the edge of the bed. <laughs> It's so awkward. I have literally nothing to say to her. I've already decided that this is like not going anywhere. But she speaks English. She speaks English. Okay. But actually on the outside we were speaking in Hindi. She's and she's attractive. But other than that, very little redeeming qualities for me. <laughs> anyway, so then she goes. And they don't my family doesn't ask anything. And then later that day, they're like, Okay, so what do you think? I was like, are you kidding me? Like, it was obviously a no. And they're like, oh, okay. Because she said yes. Oh, my gosh. And she said yes means, like, if I said yes, we would get engaged. Oh, my god! That's, like, how it works. Or often how it works, how it could work. Um, <laughs> so I could have been married to Neha. It could have been, been so easy. So easy. <laughs> could have been so easy. She wouldn't have been the one. So then they had to deliver the news to her. That's like real life swiping right there. You it's know? real life swiping. They're like, um, <laughs> she'll swipe left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Poor girl. Not a match. <laughs> Not a match. So my entire family, everyone in my family is at a rage marriage. Mm, everyone. Everyone in my extended family. Your brother? My brother's single. Okay. Great guy, Rishi, lives in San Francisco. <laughs> oh, does he? How old is he? <laughs> what? How old is he? He's 27. Oh, okay. We'll another keep it in another mind. episode, maybe. Nice. Yeah, yeah, we'll keep it in mind. <laughs> um, let's see. So, um, everyone's in my family's had arranged marriages, and they like work. I think it's because where of where you live. So I think about it's like the economics of dating, right? If there were no other choices, and this is your only choice, then of course you're going to make the best out out of it. But when you live in a, a society where there multiple options and choices, it's hard to accept something that's given to you, right? I think that's right. I think it's also like a generation difference too, because like our parents and their parents like married for stability and all of that yeah. stuff where like we as a generation are marrying more for love opposed to that protection. That yeah, tradition. totally. And then there's like a macro macroeconomic thing to like having kids to like work the farm, whatever, versus like now to get very futuristic or whatever. Like, you know, there's AI. And yeah. like, <laughs> do we need do we need more workers? Do you want kids? Yeah, definitely. And you want marriage? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think so. Pretty sure. Mm -hmm. um, I like the idea of just like having one, like having like that stability. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like when I'm in a relationship, I like that stability too. Like, it's nice to like have somebody that's like a standard like rock mm -hmm. um, in your life. I don't want to turn this into a personal ad, but I am. So what <laughs> what what type of girls are you attracted to? I'm not talking about physically, but yeah. personality wise. I think like I th I think you noted earlier. I'm probably on the adventurous side. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely adventurous. Somebody's like open yes. to stuff. Yes. Open to doing something like might, I might come home on a Wednesday and like have bought tickets to fly somewhere on Friday. So spontaneous. <laughs> yeah, a little, or open to spontaneity. Uh-huh. Um, so that that's one. Um, another, I think, like just like, curiosity like and like intelligence sort of is pretty important to me I, I like um and it's interesting i only recently learned that like other guys are like turned off by it um curiosity intelligence oh intelligence oh. so um yeah, so <laughs> well so um 
This person I dated uh, about a year ago, she is a MD, PhD at Stanford. And she had it in her profile and then took it out. And she said she got three times as many responses when mm. she took it out. Yeah, I can see that. So like for me, that's great. Like somebody who's like smart, like why wouldn't I want that? Mm -hmm. uh, but for other guys, it's like, that's not cool. Yeah. So I feel like that's like an arbitrage opportunity for me. <laughs> <laughs> other guys are not interested. I am. Um, so and then like obviously kindness or or like I spent a year of my life um, like volunteering, um, doing microfinance work, and I think somebody who's like cares about people mm -hmm. um, is that's like something that's important to me, um, and so like even though. I don't get to like live a nonprofit life now. It's something that's like part of like maybe who I am. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's important to me. I think adventure is kind, curious, down to earth. Mm -hmm. um, I think like swiping through somebody's pictures, it's pretty clear like I'm not gonna get along with somebody who's like always super made up and like you know you could sort of just like. High maintenance. High maintenance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just not my thing. Yeah. Um, so I think those those are some qualities that I look for. I think you also need a girl who challenges you. Or yeah. in a way, um, someone who brings a new perspective or teaches you something you knew, oh. know nothing about. So I love, yeah, I love being taught <laughs> uh, or learning. You know, like, I love, I love, yeah, like, you're totally right. That's a great... Great perception. What you just described is kind of the perception I've had of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't think your social media is indeed that far off. I don't think his social media is far off from his personality. Yeah. But I think it's off from what I think you're looking for in terms of a relationship. Right? Well, just because I think what you're saying is my social media says that I'm not looking for a relationship. Exactly. Right. Your and availability. I am. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and so how do you change that? Like this is like well, the, like be on how this do you... podcast for one. <laughs> okay, done. But it's Check. Very, like if like you could maintain the life you're having just with someone else. Like there is totally that side. It's not like your social media is completely unrepresentative at all. Yeah, I think it's just having a balance of posts. I really think it's a balance. Yeah, it's the mixing in all the adventure stuff with sort of like the domestic stuff. I love having guests like you on the show, Shield, because I know we're not, you know, focusing on a specific story here, yeah. but I think we're focusing on a cohort of people here in San Francisco who are like you, who um, have these awesome lives, who have this, you know, great social media presence, but there's a little bit of mysteriousness to you where people yeah. are like, what is Shield looking for? Is he even single? One. That's actually a good question. I didn't even know if you were single or not. You could just be hiding a girlfriend somewhere. I don't even know. Yeah, right? It could be. Are yeah. you? <laughs> Neha, in where my, is she? In my, in my back pocket. <laughs> oh, there she is. Oh, boom. She, she's adorable. <laughs> so one, I don't even know if you're single. Two, I don't know if you're available to date. And three, I don't know if you have time to date. These are the three questions so how I do have. So how do you change that? How do you, like... Again, it's a balance Aside post. from... Guys, I am single and available <laughs> and ready to date. Let me see your bumble then. Okay, I'm going to describe Shield's profile. Okay. Because people can't see. So your profile photo is of you and a llama making a funny face. Okay. Number two is you giving a talk somewhere. Yeah. This is actually a very good photo of you. Okay. You're very charismatic there. Three is you humping the floor at a wedding. Dancing. Like. Yeah, dancing. <laughs> I actually like that one, yeah. Um, of course, you got to have a puppy photo. Cute puppy photo. And then what's the last one here? Is that a rhino behind you? Yeah, there's okay. a rhino behind me. A rhino, okay. Okay, so oh, many Oh, here's the last now. one. It's uh, Bart Simpson, Bart, right? Um, yeah, Bart on Bart. So, like, I and a bunch of my friends dressed up as Bart Simpson and rode the Bart just for fun, random art project that I did. Okay. Yeah, so I think this really shows your personality, your totally fun and goofy but again are you able to be serious i don't well, know well there's there's picture number two right like me speaking at a conference right that's work that's not necessarily serious in a relationship right? uh, exactly okay. like i i don't see this i mean this could be your linkedin profile photo for all i know yeah this and shows it, me you're dedicated to your job which isn't necessarily bad quality at all don't get me wrong but not necessarily yeah. uh 
I'm ready for a relationship. And every other photo, you're just super goofy. Like super yeah. duper goofy, which is a great side to show, but at the same but time. But is it too much? A 34 year old man on Bumble, I would be thinking, is this okay, guy then, ready to settle down? I don't yeah. know. And then maybe, maybe my profile, what I wrote also, <laughs> is Shield. like. Venture capitalist. I'm an easygoing guy with a healthy sense of adventure, everlasting curiosity, and on fairly amazing life. Shield. <laughs> really? I'm hitting really? myself in the head. Now really? Now why people ask you or tell you on Facebook you have such an amazing Really, life. Shield? Didn't we just talk about this? I'm usually... I haven't had a chance to edit based on your comments. <laughs> oh, we're going to edit the shit out of all this right, one. All right, all right, all right. I'm usually in good spirits and up for doing something, doing something. Work. I imagine a better world and help make it real. Plus, podcast host. I guarantee lots of laughter, adventure, travel, and random silliness. I think what you're describing again is this persona of Sheil. It, so maybe there's like what I see on some people's profiles sometimes is like ready for the real deal or like looking for, which is hey, like. Hey, I put a lot of weight on that phrase yeah. right yeah. there. If you said I'm ready for the real deal, I would definitely swipe on you yeah. for sure. Okay. Yeah. Adding it right now. Adding it to the last and don't unfairly amazing life, Sheil. She so deal. full of myself. It's like casual, but it also does imply that you're ready. For sure. Yeah. It's not like cheesy, like. Yeah. Or I also like when people say, not here for the vanity swipes, ready yeah, for the real that, deal. I like that too. I've never even heard of that. I like that term, vanity swipes, because, you know, some people are on it just for an ego boost right. of some sort. Yeah. I, I'm definitely not on it for an ego boost. So I would also switch out your llama photo. So I have like one serious, five silly, or I should make it like two serious. Two serious. serious. It, yeah. Just balance. I think it's all about a balance. I want to see a serious side of you, and I want to see that goofy side. And most of the time, these guys just have goofy photos in general. I can't even see their faces and get rid of unfairly amazing I, just, I already did. Okay, <laughs> I already <laughs> said. Already gone. It's already gone. You just got 10 matches right now. This is now. like, this is real time. <laughs> real time advice from UA and Julie. Um, okay, so I've got like... And then I put ready for the real deal at the I like end. That. I, like, I that. like that. That's a really good line it's to have. Line. Yeah. I might add that too. When you look at your profile or look at your social media posts, instead of saying, like, let's say if you're doing it for dating purposes, instead of saying, would a girl like these photos, think about, would my friend set up their friend with me based on these photos? That's good. Yeah. I think that's a better way of looking at how you're, how you're being perceived. Yeah. I think you guys are totally right that the perception is that, like, I'm not available based on, like, I, I had not thought about that. Okay, let's go on to our question of the day, because we do have a question of the day. It comes from Tessa. She says, I'm at a point in my life where all of my close friends are either married or in serious relationships. I'm the only single one in this friend group, and now I have no one to go out with. Do I need to find new friends? <laughs> oh. Yeah, it, like, I mean, look, friendship evolves over time. I have a lot of friends who are dating or even married or even with kids, but like, um, it's just how you spend time with them changes yeah. and what you do changes. And so I probably spend more like weekend days with my friends with kids yeah. and we all like go to the park or something. Mm -hmm. And that's just changed from three years ago when they were crazy single people like, right. and we were going out, and now it's like Saturday at the park with the kids, and it's mm -hmm. fun, and I love it, I love them, but it just changes, and like my friends, I would say over time, I just spend less time with those that are all married and coupled up, but right. also, it just, it just happens, yeah. Mm -hmm. Julie? I think it's a balance, because I've felt this before, too, in certain situations, and it's like, you obviously want to keep being friends with someone despite whatever their relationship status is. There's reasons why you came close with them to begin with. However, on the other side, like you said, what you do changes. And if you're single, if they're all out on date night and you don't have a date, like, what are you going to do? Just sit at home? So you kind of do have to find other people that want to, like, do stuff with you in that capacity, too. Yep. So I think it's a combination of both. So she asked, should she find new friends? Yeah. Yeah, maybe making a friend or two that will be like your wing woman isn't a bad idea. But I don't think you should like all of a sudden ditch all your original friends because mm -hmm. that they're in a different stage than you. 
And I want to focus on Tessa here saying, um, I have no one to go out with. I guess I would ask Tessa, define going out. Maybe there comes a point in your life where you shouldn't be going out anymore or you should be going out less. Yeah. And when going out, there's a different definition for it. Maybe it's going to do more of the hobbies that you enjoy doing totally. or, you know, or like right. going out hiking more. It's not about going out to bars to meet someone anymore. I do think like what your friends are doing signals where you are in your life too. Mm -hmm. So if your friends tend to be coupling off or getting into relationships, maybe it kind of signals that you should be looking for something a little bit more serious too, right? Yeah. And if, it, and if that's not the case for you, then those are friends that you've outgrown or they've outgrown you. Right. And maybe it's time to find a new group of people because obviously you're not at the same stage in life anymore. I guess it's like, how do you fr define a friend? You could just have an activity partner, right? Like, you know, but how do you meet them too? <laughs> I think you just put the word out there. You crowdsource that shit. You're like, does anybody have a single friend that wants to go to this event right. with me? Yeah. That's, you know, it works totally. that way. And then you could end up make, make, making a new friend or just a new activity partner. That's true. Because either, like, of your friends, someone else has got to be single. It might For not be sure. your best friend, but it could be someone two degrees separated. Exactly. We're never unique in our situations. So if you're feeling it, there's Somebody someone else, else out there who feels the same way. Yeah. yeah. The last thing I want to say to Tessa is sometimes you also need to de demand time from your friends. I think it's totally. totally fair to say, hey, I know you guys are married or you have your own lives, but I do need some of our time too, yeah. right? Girls night out. Exactly. Like one totally. night a month, let's all go out. Yeah, just be more proactive. Yeah. And meet people. Or hang out with us. Obviously, Hello. we're the coolest. <laughs> hey, have you met Sheil? <laughs> Tessa, tell me about yourself. <laughs> he has an unfairly amazing life, by the Shut way. Up. In case you didn't know. But he's I, ready for the real deal. I totally opened myself up. Oh, I totally, yeah, I totally opened myself up for this. Okay, let's wrap this up. Listeners at home, we want to hear your stories. Has perception ever change the way you dated or change the way you went about dating. We want to hear from you and just any stories you have in general. Or if you want to meet Sheil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let us know. We'd love to hook you up. If, he's, was, not, uh, if he's not traveling, that is. If, uh, he's, if he's available and in town. <laughs> I was in town for your no pants bachelor. Yes, sure. you were. That one week. He'll <laughs> <laughs> be in town if he meets the right girl. Yes. Yeah. Came in number two. <laughs> there was no number you were two. number one in our eyes. I was number one. If you want to see Sheil uh, shirtless, write us <laughs> as well. We'll send you some Pantless, photos. you have Pant plenty of photos. Yeah, pantless, we see shirtless. Shirtless, yeah. Every... <laughs> If you Put them together with, in Photoshop and you've got the full picture. He's also available for bachelorette parties, apparently. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> and with that said, stay, stay dateable. Your action item for this week is to think about how you want to be perceived. In this day and age, your brand is your online presence. So how do you want to sell your product? Actually, take the time to jot down how you want to be perceived and see if that matches up to what you're actually putting out there on the World Wide Web. The most efficient way to meet new people is a combination of online and offline. 500 Brunches has your offline covered. Connect over brunch with new friends. Come alone or bring a buddy. There is always a table full of friendly faces, mimosas, and eggs benedict. Sign up at 500brunches.com and use the code DATEABLE for a free entry. To connect with us, visit datablepodcast.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all under Datable Podcast. Mm -hmm.